as a global association, the World Evangelical Alliance seeks to respond to the needs of our members around the world, those we serve. And as we listen to what's happening at the grassroots, that filters to us and to determine what kind of initiatives that we should engage in. And over the last number of years, uh, the whole issue of peace building and reconciliation uh, was a conversation taking place in many countries amongst our members. And so we felt the, the, the imperative to begin to deal with this issue in significant ways. And so we decided that we would launch the World Evangelical Alliance Peace Building and Reconciliation Initiative uh, to respond to the needs of our community, how our community could respond to the needs of the world around them. So this is a very important initiative for WA. Uh, we believe that the heart of the gospel message is about reconciliation. We as evangelicals believe that we're united to Christ uh, through what he did on the cross. We're reconciled to him. We also can be reconciled uh, to each other, to humanity, to creation. Uh, again, the heart of the gospel is reconciliation. And so as evangelicals, we need to be on the forefront of bringing this message of hope and peace and reconciliation in the world. That's why it's important for World Evangelical Alliance to engage in this very important issue. One of the unique opportunities that uh, World Evangelical Alliance Peace and Reconciliation Initiative brings is the fact that we serve a constituency of 650 million Christians. And because of that, we can play this role of representing one of the main world church bodies as we go into various contexts. Uh, this is important. This is, we're not a single organization. We're made up of many members. And therefore, we can speak in a representative way for a significant population group in the world. And so this really seeks to empower the work that we're doing and strengthen the work and our voice as we engage in peace building and reconciliation. As I look across the world, and, and it's very troubled in many parts of it. There's conflict in places like the Philippines, in Africa, in the Middle East, in North Africa. And for us as World Evangelical Alliance, we've said, what difference can we make in some of these places? Recently, we were asked to hold a peace conference in South Sudan. So and under our umbrella as World Evangelical Alliance, we brought together tribal leaders and from Jongale State, where in the past year, uh, 4,000 people have died because of this conflict. Well, for those three days, those leaders met and tried to work through the, some principles of reconciliation, how they could build peace in their, in their state. It's been encouraging now to hear the good results that have come from that conference. While more, obviously more work needs to be done, the, the amount of violence that's been committed since that conference has significantly gone down. There's other parts of the world where we're working, uh, not just uh, publicly like that, but privately behind the scenes. Of course, it's the situation in the Middle East, in places like Egypt, where quietly behind the scenes we're trying to make a difference. Or we're in conversations in other parts of the world, uh, uh, like Nigeria, where there's conflict there uh, uh, going on. And so we need to be in these dialogues uh, behind the scenes, uh, building bridges, understanding, and so that we can be resolving some of these uh, tremendous problems. One of our beliefs at World Evangelical Alliance is that religious freedom is for all people, for all religions, and that we should treat each other with respect and dignity. Recently, when a pastor from Florida decided he was going to burn the Quran, uh, we were asked to intervene into that story. Because on previous occasions, we had seen the outbreak of violence in response to such actions. And so we decided that we would meet with him and try to dissuade him from this act, that he did not have to desecrate some religion's holy book to make his point. So we had a long discussion that this was not a Christian way of doing it. Of course, we didn't dissuade him. He eventually went ahead and, uh, and burnt the Quran. One of the things we were able to do with this situation was we were able to communicate to media outlets in the, particularly the Islamic world, of why we as Christians did not want to see Qurans burnt. Uh, and to say that this pastor that was doing this from this very tiny church was not representative of who we are as Christians. And because we're able to get that message out, a message of reconciliation, a message of peace, 
it's our understanding that there were no violent outbreaks in response to the burning of the Quran. So as we seek to build peace and reconciliation, uh, particularly interfaith uh, peace and reconciliation, again, the principle of being, respecting each other, but speaking truth to each other as well. And so we feel that we have this role, particularly in the area of interfaith conflict, as a uh, religious body, as a faith body, to engage with other faith bodies in beating, building more faithful societies. I'm really excited to be able to speak at uh, Evangelicals for Peace. I want to applaud this initiative. As, I, as we look across the world and these conflicts that we've talked about, they're, they're massive. They're, they're going to take many groups coming together to respond to them. And I believe that this group that's coming together here in Washington is so very important that as evangelicals who are committed to collaboration and partnership, but are also committed to peace building, and that we believe together we can have greater impact. So I'm anticipating some great things coming out of this uh, gathering of evangelicals for peace. And I, again, I want to say I'm looking forward to being there and, and being involved and interacting with other leaders about how we as evangelicals can be peace builders in the world. So I want to encourage you to participate in this, this great event that's coming up.